Hello, welcome back to the woods. Now, for those of you who are regular to the channel, you remember I did a cookery video a couple of videos ago. And also, some of you follow me over on Instagram and you'll see that I, I put a, a picture up over the weekend of my basher all set up. Uh, I'd taken it in the morning uh, after a night out in the woods where I was, I was on a job. And I've had quite a few questions about, well, what is in the pack what setup do you use what do you use at this time of year out in the woods so that's what i'm going to go through in this video the pack what the pack is more importantly what's inside of it that allows me to be out overnight be relatively comfortable and have everything i need to crack on with my job So this is the pack that I tend to use quite a lot, particularly this time of year, particularly if I'm only out overnight or out for a couple of nights. And it's the Swedish LK35. This one has been modified just a bit, just really so it suits my needs. But what I find even with the basic model um, is it's a very comfortable pack. It has this old school external frame, which a lot of people don't like. I do I think they're great and it has a very simple harness system so literally your shoulder straps and a couple of tension straps and that keeps all of this off your back and the air circulates in behind which keeps your back nice and cool and you don't get so sweaty which particularly when the weather's warm like it is at the moment that's absolutely ideal but the ex uh, internal frame ones they sit against your back you get hot and sweaty in there <clears throat> if you've only got a t-shirt on underneath you tend to find where the t-shirt gets wet it rides up and you end up with sore patches across your back with this you don't you've always got that air flowing behind and it's a great great little pack now the other great thing with the swedish lk35 is it's supposed to be 35 liters well it's 35 swedish liters which are clearly bigger than our uk liters because this is quite a bit bigger than my uh, 35 litre Monroe, which will easily fit inside this. But even with that extra size, it's still not a particularly big pack. And you've got to think quite carefully about what you actually put in it. So in doing that, it helps to keep your overall pack weight down. Yes, it's quite a heavy pack because it's got that external frame, but because of its restricted size, you've got to think carefully about what goes in it. So as I said, this one has been modified quite a bit just to make it work for me. On the top, I put a grab handle. What I also did was I put in a mesh pocket on the top and two mesh pockets on the side. And those are expanding ones so I can fit water bottles, tools, anything that I need to get to in a hurry on the outside. If you own an LK35, you'll also know that inside there used to be a big pocket for, for putting heavier stuff so it's closer to your center of gravity. What I've done with mine was I took that internal pocket and I've stitched it on the outside and that's where I keep my bivy kit. So my, my waterproof poncho, uh, my jungle toggle sets and my tent pegs are all in that pocket there, stowed away from my other gear. So if it's all soaking wet, covered in mud, it doesn't matter. It's all in there. One of the other things that I did is I replaced uh, the original metal buckles with these metal G hooks and they are a great addition. I replaced all the webbing as well. And they work simply, they're metal, they're not going to break. And as well as the ones there, what I also did was I fitted an extra set to the bottom as well. So my roll mat and stuff can go on the bottom. 
I don't like stuff attached to the top of my rucksack. As I'm moving through the woodland, I don't want anything that's too tall or too wide because that is gonna get in the way. So that is the pack. Turning it round, the inside, well, I've got a harness which isn't dissimilar to the original one, just some simple shoulder straps with some ladder lock buckles on there and some slightly longer straps and then some Velcro adjustable webbing straps on here so that I can retension it easily and that makes for a nice comfortable carry. So when I pack my rucksack I like to have everything where I need it, when I need it. The stuff that I may need to get to in a hurry lives in the top pocket. Stuff I might need regularly through the day, so water, tools, etc., goes in my side pockets. So in the top, I've got my first aid kit. Something I hope I don't have to use, but if I do need it, I need to get to it in a hurry. So that's why it's there. Also in the top, another first aid item. And that's a field dressing for those, those bigger wounds. It's there just in case. As I said, it's something I don't want to have to use, but if I do need to use it, I'm probably going to need to use it in a hurry. Also in the top, I've got one of these. And this is my little FUBAR headband. If you're not sure what one is, basically it's a, a strap that you put around your head and you put your torch into it and it gives you hands-free lighting. Turns a normal torch into a head torch. This one also doubles up as a tourniquet. If you look back through my playlist, you will find a whole video on the FUBAR headband. So that is my last item that lives in the top. So next we'll look at the side pockets, the bits that I might need to get to frequently during the day. So stuff like water, brew kit, all of that type of thing. So over on this side I have in my mesh dump pocket my little brew kit. So I've got Nalgene Oasis water bottle, USGI mug and the little stand. Those of you who are regulars to the channel, you'll see this in an awful lot of my videos and it is an excellent bit of kit. It also weighs virtually nothing at all. Also in there I have the lid to go on top, my bottle of meths and my little stealth stove, my little monkey boy stove, which is just enough for getting a brew. As well as that, I also have my little spoon and a mesh collecting bag for those foraging opportunities while I'm out on the trail. Over on the other side, well, another water bottle. I always like to go out with at least two water bottles and some tools. My Norland hatchet. If I'm not carrying this then the other thing that I tend to carry is a cold steel trail hawk and that's probably the, the closest thing that I can get to this but this is my favourite one. And then last but not least I've got my little open L folding pruning saw. So those are my main external pockets. There's the stuff that I need to get to in a hurry, which is in the top, and the stuff I need to get to regularly, which is on the sides. Now, there's also another external pocket, but it's protected by this outer flap. And if I open this up, in here at the front, if I lift up this strap, what I've got is my poncho. And I tend to carry a waterproof poncho quite a lot. This is a little, um, Helicontex USGI poncho, which also forms part of my rain gear, or the mainstay of my rain gear at this time of year. Also, it's part of my shelter. So I've also got, in here with that, my bag with my jungle toggles in there, 
and my tent pegs. And what that allows me to do is I can rock up on site and I can quickly, if it's raining, put up overhead cover without opening up the contents of my rucksack and letting it all get wet. Now, opening the pack up, what you'll notice is inside, well, there is another bag and this is just an old army issue uh, rucksack liner, which helps to keep the contents of this all nice and dry. What you shouldn't do is just rely on the rucksack to keep stuff dry. The number of times I've been out on a job and while you're teaching, it starts to absolutely chuck it down with rain and I haven't had a chance to put a shelter up so my rucksack is just left out in the rain for the whole day. What I want is to be able to come back to my kit at the end of the day and everything still be dry inside. And this cheap little liner just allows that to happen. So again, delving into the bag, everything needs to be where I need it, when I need it. So normally when I stop at the end of the day, I want to put some, some warm kit on. So that needs to be fairly near the top. So reaching in, well, <clears throat> I've got my little woolly beanie, which I've had for years. It's a great, great bit of kit. And usually when I first stop, this is the first thing that always goes on. Sometimes that's just enough. I don't have to put anything else on. I've also got in here, well, this is a, a wool, well, it's a, a merino wool cycling top from, uh, from Aldi's. And it's basically like a very lightweight Heli Hansen field jacket. It's got the thumb loops on the sleeves, it's got a long back, it's got a zip up collar. It's lightweight, it's compact, and it's super, super warm. So that, and my woolly hat, when I first finish at the end of the day, that's what goes on, and then my smock goes on over the top. Also, in here as well, I've got a head over, some gloves, an insect head net, all extra bits of insulation and protection that I might need to get to <coughs> fairly early on in the evening. Also in here, I've got my brew kit. So I've got a little thing of tea bags, I've got my emergency hot chocolate sachet as well. And to go with that, well, I've got these. And these are folding cups. This is the original size. They come from Sweden and they are a really useful little bit of kit. They're compact, they don't weigh a whole lot, and they're a really good shape and a really good size for keeping with you through the day for taking on fluids. This one quite often just lives in my pocket. It's folds down that small. The bigger version, well this can be a cup or a folding eating bowl. And the combination of the two fit nicely inside each other and don't take up a whole lot of space. Next in the top, well, it's an item a lot of you will have seen before. It's my fire lighting pouch. And I keep all my basic fire lighting equipment in there again. Look back in my playlist and it will tell you exactly what is in this. And I keep it there because I might finish at the end of the day and I might want to get myself a little fire going. And I've got all the items in there to do so. Also in here, I've got my spare fuel. Obviously the one in the side pouch is only a little bottle and this I refill from through the course of the day. Nothing expensive, just a little drinks bottle wrapped up in some duct tape, something bright and visible on there, just to say what it is. These, well it would be an item that's thrown away, but this I've probably had about four or five years and I think the one I had before it lasted a, a similar amount of time. So they're a good, useful bit of kit that doesn't really cost anything. Next up, I've got my knife. Now while I'm teaching, I've usually got a fixed blade knife. But for an awful lot of stuff that I do in camp, things like 
slicing onions, peeling potatoes, those types of things, and food prep. I use this, and this is my little <coughs> open L garden knife. Also on there, I have a ferro rod and a little whistle as well. And this, when I'm in camp, goes on around my neck, so I've always got my little cutting tool with me. Now obviously if you're out in the field for any length of time, you want to stay reasonably clean. If you're out working in the field and you've got to present to people, then you need to be clean. You can't be a stinky instructor. So in here, I've got my wash kit. And it's a few simple items, again, in a dry bag. So it's kept separate from the rest of my kit. I've got one microfiber towel. And then I've got a few well-chosen assorted bits of kit including a little brush, a bit of baby soap, some earplugs and a bit of roll-on deodorant. So just a few basic items. I've also got my toothpaste in there and half a toothbrush. You don't need a lot in the field to keep yourself clean. So I'm getting towards the bottom of the pack right now, so it means I'm probably getting towards the end of the day because that tends to be how my routine works. So right down at the bottom of the pack, I've got my minimal scarf, which also doubles up as my sleeping bag liner. I've got a bag, a small nylon bag that weighs nothing at all and scrunches down really small. Inside, there's a, a parachute nylon top and trousers, a zoot suit. There's also a pair of pants and a spare set of light socks in there. And that is my change of clothing for in the evening when I get into my sleeping bag. I want to take this lot off because it's still going to have moisture in it. It's probably going to smell. And I'll chuck this on for sleeping in. It's nice and lightweight, it dries quick, and actually it's reasonably warm too. So the last few bits, well, I've got an Alpkit um, cloud base. It's one of those inflatable air mats. And I've had this one about three years. And it's a really good bit of kit. Very, very comfortable to lay on. Probably not particularly intuitive, but that's why I carry a spare roll mat as well. That sits down on the ground. This then goes inside my bivvy bag, underneath my sleeping bag, and between the two of them, I get insulation and comfort. And then last up, well, in here, is my sleeping bag and my bivvy bag. Now, I don't like to carry too, too much. Um, I've never been one for carrying huge weights, but as I've got older, and as your back starts to play up, you try to go in as light as possible. Now, quite often I'll use my Corinthia bag, but this time of year, I'll get away with either a jungle bag, or in this particular case, I've got a mountain equipment pipe dream 400 I think it is which weighs about 400 grams and that is inside uh, an Alpkit Hunker XL bivvy which again very very lightweight this whole sleeping system weighs very little and well this isn't compressed this is just stuffed in the bag you can see it will compress down quite a lot more and with that setup that I've got there that pretty much covers me yeah it's not my teaching kit in there but that is my living kit. So everything I need to survive out in the field for a couple of nights in relative comfort. I can rock up on site and it doesn't matter whether it's daytime, nighttime, more often than not, quite often by the time I've finished working, I'm setting up in the dark. This setup is nice and nice and easy. Yes, I do like a hammock, but a hammock is not particularly easy to set up in a pitch black wood 
fine if you've got the time, but if you haven't and you're tired and you just want to throw something out on the ground, stick a roll mat underneath it, blow up the air mat and get inside it. Well, you can't go wrong with the setup I've got here. Yep, it's not a massive tarp, it's a little waterproof poncho, but well, the bivy bag keeps my sleeping bag dry and it gives me enough space to get a brew on from underneath. And that's one of the things I do in the morning. I'm gonna sit up in my sleeping bag. I have my brew kit out next to me and I can sit, I can get a brew on the go and I'm nice and nice and comfy. So that's the gear that I carry while I'm out. You might have completely different choices, but this just gives you an insight into what I carry and it, it might give you a few ideas too. So if there's any, any ideas in there that you can take away, fill your boots. So there you go. That is what's in my pack. It might not be the latest or the lightest or the best or the most expensive, but it, it works for me and it has done for quite a few years. It's not particularly expensive stuff, most of it. It is stuff that is very, very tried and tested. And as I said earlier, if it works for you, feel free to nick the idea, but it does definitely work for me. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then remember, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Down in the description box down below, there'll be a link over to my Patreon page. If you want to get involved with the channel, then follow that link. Also, if you're a patron, you get a heads up when I'm about to release new products, which I am going to be releasing some new stuff fairly soon over on my Etsy shop, which you will also find the link in the description box down below. There's also a link to my Instagram page. If you don't follow me over there already, then, then pop over there and give me a follow. Thank you ever so much to all the guys who, who did follow me. Um, if you don't know, my account was, I had about 2,000 followers and then it got hacked and I had to go back and start all over again. And you, brilliant, brilliant people, have started bringing my numbers up on that again. So thank you all very much for that. I think that's everything. I've been Neil and until next time, stay safe. <laughs>